My name is Christine Williamson. I'm a building scientist and I teach architects and architects in training about building science and construction. I use Morfolio Trace in my daily practice to communicate my design ideas to my clients and in teaching, I use it to communicate technical concepts to architects. I am a big believer in hand sketching, not just for its artfulness or even for communication, but really as a means of understanding. I find that what was true for me at the beginning of my career is still true today, and that is that I don't begin to truly understand something until I draw it. Now that said, I've always been super self-conscious about how my sketches look. And one of the reasons I enjoy using Trace is because my sketching looks a lot more professional than it used to, which is obviously pretty important in business. Now, I'm gonna take you through my process. I'm gonna take you through drawing a window sill detail. This is gonna be most appropriate for those of you who work on North American framed construction. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up Trace, start a new document. And I like to draw in the order in which each element of the detail is actually going to be installed. We're going to start with framing, uh, 2x4, 2x6, 2x8, and so on. And we're going to use a stencil to do that, that's what this is. Pick our 2x6. And then we're going to draw our exterior sheathing. This is a wood-based sheeting, so I'm going to show you just a residential example here. And Trace actually has a stencil for what I'm doing right now, but I kind of just like drawing it. I think the imprecision is kind of nice. It indicates that this is what it is. It's a conceptual sketch showing the general relationships of the elements to each other. It's not something that we're actually doing takeoffs from or anything. If you do want to clean this up, like I kind of do here, you can select your eraser, which has a line weight and a thickness, just like a regular pen. And now we've got our framing and our, and our sheathing at our, at our sill. So originally I was just gonna show you a sill detail, but I kinda wanna show you the head detail too. It's so easy, so we're gonna, gonna do that. I'm gonna give myself a little guide here. I'll show you what that's about in a moment. Then I'm gonna select my framing at the sill. I'm gonna duplicate it, I'm gonna flip it, and I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna align it with the guide so that my head and sill are roughly aligned. So this is our framing. We're, we're in good shape. This is what we call the rough opening, and this is what needs to get prepared by the next trade which is the waterproofing installer, who also usually installs the windows in uh, North America. So I'm gonna adjust the layers, new trade, new layer. And the first thing that I like for waterproofing installer to do is to install a little wood nailer at the sill of the opening. And then the waterproofing sub is going to install fluid membrane on the exterior sheathing. I like to use a really vibrant color for this and a thick line weight to really emphasize it. And we want to take this membrane and have it carry all the way into the interior of our opening. At the head, at the jams, and also at the sill. We call that picture framing the opening. And 
Now at the sill, we're gonna carry the membrane up our little nailer. And this gives us a membrane sill pan with a, uh, with a back dam. ready to install our window. I do a lot of window details, so I uh, spent an afternoon and I drew the drew out the profiles that I use most frequently for such a time as this. So I can add that. I take I just take a screenshot of it and crop it and add it as a photo into my sketch here. I can scale it to the size I need. Is that right? I'm gonna click and hold and drag it down so I can so I can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna want to duplicate this layer. And I'm gonna take that duplicated layer, I'm gonna flip it, move it so that we get our window at our head as well. And the next thing the window installer and waterproofing contractor do is install fluid over the flange of the window. I'm gonna do this at the head and at the jams, which I'm not drawing here, but they're not gonna do it at the sill. And we wanna have them extend this membrane because this is a snap-in flange. You can see the frame is notched to receive that flange. Um, we want to extend the fluid all the way onto the frame to cover these joints. So again, we do this at the head and the jams, but not at the sill. What we want is for incidental water from a leaking window that gets in here to be able to drain behind the flange to the exterior. Now we're not finished. Before we can be dried in, we want to draw a backer rod and sealant joint on the interior. This is going to be a full perimeter seal. There we go. It is our redundant water seal and it's our air seal. So remember that this handles the majority of our water control and it's at our head and our jams, but it's not continuous to allow drainage at the sill. So it's really important that we include this seal as our, uh, as our air seal so that we get continuity there. So we are now dried in. This is a significant stage, that's the term that gets used, and interior work can now begin on the, on the job because obviously you don't want to start sensitive moisture, installing moisture sensitive materials finished materials when the windows aren't in and uh, things can get damaged. Um, the glazing contractor, even though we're dried in, will often install, I recommend, a secondary metal or plastic head flashing. So it's just a piece of bent metal with a drip and that'll get stripped in with more fluid membrane. Now we don't need this for water control or waterproofing. We're already dried in before we do this. This is what we call secondary head flashing and it sheds water, it reduces the load on our window. start some of that interior finish work. We'll do it on a new layer because it's a new trade. We'll make these all transparent now. Install our interior drywall. Now I'm going to break my rule a little bit here and install the drywall before the cavity insulation. The reason I'm doing that is because I find that when I draw the cavity insulation I need a guide. These lines serve as a guide. Do that cavity insulation now. I'm 
and at the head. There's a stencil for this too, but it's kind of fun to draw. Now on the exterior, this is not a part that I'm usually responsible, a part of the design that I'm usually really responsible for. So I like to just generically, oops, we better finish fast, generically represent this with uh, sort of some sort of generic panel siding installed on furring. And I use the dash line to represent that. If you wanted to do brick, I use a, uh, a stencil that they've got conveniently here. So I'll show you that at the, the cell here. Do a brick veneer. And we'll obviously want to erase the mortar joint at the top there. They won't put mortar there in real life. Um, the cladding installer will often install a water shedding seal here, a cladding closure seal. Actually, let's move this a little bit closer. I didn't quite draw it right. Probably will be a little, a little closer to the window there. a little cladding closure seal. Again, we're, we're dried in already. This is more an aesthetic closure, cladding closure, um, but it also sheds water. So it reduces the, the load and protects what's behind it from exposure. And we're pretty much finished here. I haven't finished any interior finishes here or any window sill or trim, um, but this is, the, um, this is the idea. Before I do anything with this, I'm gonna want to delete these or hide from view the, the shadows behind our layers. So I can just turn them off like that. And I'm left with the shadow for the base layer and I can just turn that off. And then I can take a screenshot and use it wherever I like. And that's it. I hope you found that helpful. If you are interested in learning more about building science and construction, and I hope you are, you can find me, Christine Williamson, on Instagram at Building Science Fight Club.